Okay, in this problem, you don't see this on the paper because it's actually on the back side of our notes, but we're solving, and we're solving in the interval 0 to 2 pi. So keep that in mind. We've got none of the in pi business at the end. We're only going to give the simple solutions. If you see an equation that looks like this, notice everything is signed. That's good. But what we're going to do is we're going to factor this to solve it. And this looks like a quadratic equation. By quadratic, I mean it looks like a parabola equation. We can think of this in the same method as we think about 2u squared minus u minus 1 is equal to 0. So if I replace sine of x with the letter u, for visualization's sake, if I can factor this in red, then I can factor the original problem. And it turns out that I can. Now, the way to factor that is up to another video. You have to go find some help on how to factor equations if you don't know how to do this. Here's my method. u times 2u is 2u squared. 1 times 1 is 1. I did that because this comes from the first term and this comes from the last term. Now if I multiply across that gives me 1 and 2, 1u and 2u. I need these values to add up to the term in the middle which is negative u. The only way that that happens is if this is negative which means this had to be negative. And so my factors are u minus 1 and 2u plus 1. If you have another way that's fantastic. If you're in my classroom, you've seen this before. If you're watching videos and you're just random person online, that you probably need to go up and, and look that stuff up somewhere, how to factor this equation. But the nice thing is this. If I can factor this equation with the u's, that means I could have done it with sine of x as well. And in fact, it turns out to be sine of x minus 1 to sine of x plus 1. That is equal to 0. And this yields me two different equations. See, from this one, I could have said that the sine of x minus 1 is 0 which means sine of x is equal to 1. Or, from the right side, I could have said that 2 sine of x plus 1 is equal to 0. So that means that sine of x is equal to negative 1 half. And now it's time to do all students take classes. I need to know what's y, what sine coordinates provide me with an, a, a value of 1. Um, so, ways to do that then. It turns out that if I know the unit circle, this makes this problem a little bit easier because I remember this is directly related to the y coordinate of the unit circle. Where do I have y coordinates of 1? Well, that only happens at the very highest point, right here. So it turns out 90 degrees is the only value I can put in that will give me a sine of 1. I can check that if I want to. I can say sine of 90, and I do get 1. Sine of anything else, you're not going to get 1. I could also do this. I could say y equals the sine of x, and I can graph it from 0 to 360 degrees out, and when I graph that, it looks like this. And I notice that the only point that it hits positive 1, put a second line in, the only line that it hits, the only point that it hits is 1 is right here. And it turns out that that is 90 degrees. So there's another way to look at it. Okay? There's another way to do it. You can graph it. Now, for this one, sine of x is equal to negative 1 half. Same, day, same idea, except I need to draw two triangles. Sine is positive in the third, or excuse me, it's negative in the third and fourth quadrants. I have an opposite of one and a hypotenuse to two. We know from doing these triangles long enough that that is the angle of 30 degrees. The third side would have been square root of three if we would have kept it up. 30, 60, 90 triangle. So the two solutions for this are not 30 degrees and 30 degrees, but it's really 180 plus 30. That's 210 degrees. And this one over here would have been 360 minus 30, 210 minus, or excuse me, 330 is the second one. Now this is great, except all these answers are in degrees, so my last step is to convert them to radians. X equals pi over 2. 210 would be 7 pi over 6. And 330 is 11 pi over 6. So those are my three answers. By the way, how did I do that so quickly? Because pi over 6 is 30 degrees, and 7 times 30 gives me 210. 11 times 30 gives me 330. That's how I'm doing that so fast in my head. All right, let's go do this one. Everything's cosine. Fantastic. Uh, looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? In fact, without fa going through all the trouble, I'm going to go right down here. You would have factored this out to cosine minus 1 to cosine plus 1. So it would have been exactly like this and you would have broken it apart, and you would have found instead of sine x equals 1, we can go straight to this conclusion, 
that cosine x is equal to 1, or cosine x is equal to negative 1 half. So really what I'm doing is I'm skipping a lot of the work that got me to this point because it's all exactly the same, just with a different function. So I do this. I say, well, geez, where is cosine equal to 1? I'll just do it this way, graphically. Where is cosine x equal to 1? Well, if I graph it from 0 to 360 degrees, I find out that it happens in two locations. It's at 0 and it's at 360. But the problem is, is that we were originally told to solve only up to, but not including, 2 pi. So we're not going to include the 360 degrees in this one. We're only going to say 0. Where is the cosine of x 1 when x is equal to 0 degrees, or 0 radians? Now, for the second one, where is the cosine negative 1 half? So I would have to know where the cosine is negative, first of all. That's going to be the second and third quadrants, according to all students' state classes. I know that the adjacent is 1 and the hypotenuse is 2. Now, we've been doing triangles long enough to understand that this third side is going to be square root of 3, so we really have a 60 degree angle in here. But we're not going to say 60 degrees because that's quadrant 1. We need to say 180 minus 60 for this guy, that's 120, and 180 plus 60 for the second one, that's 240. So my three answers are 0 degrees, 120 degrees, and 240 degrees, which I'm now going to convert into radians. That's 0. 120 is 2 times 60, so 2 pi over 3. And 240 is 4 times 60, so it's 4 pi over 3. And because I'm only limiting the 0 to 2 pi, I don't have to worry about any of the infinite solution stuff. Those are my answers.